What's going on guys, it's Shu here, bringing you another review on My Hero Academia, or better yet, excuse me, My Villain Academia. And in these two episodes, I've been very surprised of how good the episode was. I mean, we're seeing how these villains are going up against each other. The battle of ideology, honestly, it's just, I liked it. I, I can't complain, this has been a pretty good episode. We get to see some interesting things, like some backstory on... Destro, and not only that, but Toga being the main character, kind of, in this episode. But before I get to you guys, please make sure to subscribe if you enjoy the content. If you like the video, please make sure to hit that like button, notifications, all that good jazz, as it helps out tremendously on the channel. But let's get right into it. So, we open up with the episode with Destro, the original, I guess you could say, the originator of the Liberation Army. And he actually uh, was caught. We see how. He was actually all about getting all these people unified, and unfortunately he writes a book and commits suicide. Uh, a bit of unexpected ending there, but even crazier was the fact that he didn't know that he had a son, and this is why we have Redestro, who carries on basically the will of his father. And so we have uh, basically the villains getting ready to try to rescue their friend. Unfortunately, what was surprising is that they come across this city and we have a hero named Sliding Go, which I've seen already in this, what well, we've seen, excuse me, in this season and actually being kind of like the, the escort. Uh, I did not expect him being part of this, this group. So I wonder where did he go afterwards and will we see more of him? I'm very curious. But we actually get into the city and we see that they're being basically waited on by the rest of the, I guess you could say, the, a good portion of the group. And they start attacking them. Uh, I mean, you only have six members against a good over a hundred thousand. And they all start fighting them. And I love how they're all kind of split up. Uh, I will say that uh, Shigaraki was really a surprise to me in this episode on how he's handling it. We definitely see them controlling their abilities way better. I mean, a lot of people have been training. We've, we've heard that. They've been training every day. And that they, this is what they do. And, what you know, that they've gotten strong. And they are powerful. However, it's still not enough for some of these guys. We see how, like, for example, Chigaraki. I'm going to go ahead and get into him since I've already mentioned him. Chigaraki, his ability for decaying has gone up exponentially. We actually see him being able to decay people that he's not even touching. He kills many, many people in this episode uh, with no effort whatsoever. He is exhausted, though. We see him being very tired, and we, we can't blame the guy. He's basically a walking zombie because of the lack of sleep. And, you know, who, of course, when you're being chased by a giant monster, of course that's going to be the case. Uh, so interesting to see him in this, I guess you'd say this, uh, this state. But we then kind of shift over to Toga, who is being constantly being chased by the villain Curious, who wants to get the interview of a lifetime. She wants to know more about Toga, why she did what she did, how she became the way that she did, her reasoning, all these things. Toga is refusing to talk. She doesn't want to spend any time with her. She just wants to basically do her. She wants to get around and do what pleases her. And we see her past and we see how kind of messed up it is. From a young age, we see that she was fascinated with blood, uh, loving things, and how that kind of intertwined and uh, kind of became distorted. Honestly, I was very surprised to see how she made it this far without being killed. Uh, she's escaped the heroes, she's escaped the uh, cops, um, she's been very elusive, and, you know, just to be able to see her being able to do this fascinates Curious, you know, she really wants to know more about her, but at the same time, she wants to use her, it is one of her things, she wants to use Toka's story as a, basically a martyr, I mean, that's my interpretation of it, she wants to use her for their causes. She wants to be able to bring her in just to throw her out. And we see that Curious is not a good person at all. 
In fact, she actually uses her own people as grenades, and they're willing. They're more than willing to do this. And so we see that she's no, she's not a great person. And so we actually see her, um, you know, trying to convince Toga. Toga actually is able to kind of use what little strength she has and use the blood that she had from Okacho, which was crazy, use her quirk, which is now a new, basically a new push to her ability. And she kills Curious and her people, which was kind of a surprise. We see her going that far to do this and pushing herself to these limits. And I guess you can, we can kind of understand that this is what's happening now. You're pushing your limits to go further beyond whether you're good or bad. And we also can see Dobby going up against an ice guy, which was honestly a very surprising move because we actually see this guy wanting to like really fight him. And he looks powerful. So that was kind of a shock. But by the end of the episode, we actually see twice finding Toga who hid away in a shed, tries to find her because he obviously cares for her a lot, but they want to use twice to be able to, I guess, create doubles and whatnot. And I feel bad for twice because it'll be mostly his episode next week. So that was a pretty good episode, guys. Let me know what you guys think. As always, stay safe and I'll catch you later.